Bedford, I would say today is a great success because great success. Every song is in the key of C. Yeah, it every that, single one. When in doubt, play a C, an F, a G, or an A minor. That's all we got. I don't think there's a two that, today. I think that it is four chords in a plan, literally all day long. Did you? Got a little different Sunday routine this morning. We had no rehearsal this week. Bradford is here with us today. Hello. At the Durham Durham campus. Durham. And uh, today, Brad and I are going to talk about playing worship with playing two, guitar. Playing with two electric guitar players. A lot of the content we do on the channel is. One. Like, what do you do if you're the only guitar player? Like, all of our, like, uh, you know, guitar cover videos are just one guitar. Yeah. Today we're two guitars. I'd say, let's do tips throughout this video. I got tip number one. Communicate. I was just about to say. <laughs> Communication. So, throughout the week, I texted Bradford, and I said, Bradford, because you're leading two songs. I'm not leading any songs. So I said, tell me what you want to play lead guitar on, and we just split up parts. Yeah. And so you're playing lead on what songs? How He Loves. We're, we're, throwing, we're bringing back How He Loves today, by the way. And Tremble. And Tremble. And I'm playing lead on Found in You, which is the first song, and Waymaker. Mm -hmm. And so for the rest of it, I'm playing rhythm and you're playing, you know, yeah. and vice versa. We're flipping yeah. it. Communication is key. Communication. Mm. The second tip is tune your guitar. Yeah, tune your guitar is, is a good start. Actually, on the real though, part of the reason why yeah. this, that's all important is because if you got two guys playing guitar and you don't talk about it, mm -hmm. if you play the exact same thing, it'll actually make it's a guitar mess. sound out of tune. Like yeah. if you're both picking through chords, because it's like that's actually what chorus is. The chorus effect is like another layer of your Too guitar out of tune that is thing. that is yeah. shifted. Yep. So that's the chorus effect. So that's like it'll sound like you'll think that we're playing clean guitars, but if we both Plus, hit the same note, if two, it'll sound like chorus. If two guitar players are arpeggiating chords and they're not just like perfectly in sync, it's a hot mess, dude. It does not even, sound even right. Even the one guitar player going in the studio going back and playing the same yeah, thing twice, hard. that's hard. Yeah, so. so live, especially if you you know don't know exactly what the other player's playing, you need to come up with parts. And we'll talk throughout the day about how you can do that, how to best utilize two electric guitar players in the same band. Sound fantastic. Whoa, Austin, turn the lights out on me. I'm gonna walk out here. I had great lighting back there. And then it all went away. To follow up on my last little segment that I talked about, we had no rehearsal. This is what we're doing this week. We, we're doing a Sunday morning rehearsal. And so we meet a little earlier than usual. So 6.15 is our typical call time. Today we met at 6 a.m. And uh, we're just, we run through the songs just to make sure everybody's on the same page. And now we took a little five minute break. It is right now at 7.30. And now we're doing a full run through. So we sort of have an abbreviated rehearsal run through on Sunday morning on weeks where we don't have a Wednesday rehearsal, which is rare, or a midweek rehearsal. So it's Wednesday at this campus, it's Thursday at the other campuses. So curtains on three. But you gotta say it like you mean it, like you gotta like be bold, be courageous, alright? You ready? One, two, three, curtain! Yeah, I like your keys. Look at this. This is Bradford's pedal board of glory and wonder. And here's Bradford programming his RJM Mastermind. Is that what that thing is called? Yep. Talk to me, Bradford. What are you doing? I'm making presets. Why didn't you do this yesterday or Thursday? I forgot. I forgot. He's building his presets out. See, Bradford, if you played a Helix, you know how easy this would be? This is an opportunity for Bradford and I tell you, as a guitar player, that you can go old school with pedals. Like, look at all that stuff back there. So there it is. It's Just back there. look at it. Just look at it. And you can still program stuff like a like a Helix with, with snapshots or like an Axe FX with scenes. That's what I'm doing. And turn on and off all kinds of stuff at the press of a button with something like this in the dark. This is the RJM PVC 6X. PVC 6X. Bradford finished programming his guitar sounds with five minutes and two five seconds to spare. Left. 
And, I was uh, doing it. I was doing it on the fly, and it's not easy when you don't set your board up to be done that way. And you're brave because you haven't actually played through them yet. No, but push, I know you're gonna push buttons. I know in faith in that faith. your work has been good. Give us the So the next thing hmm. is use available tools. Oh yes. To identify what are said some parts. available tools. Well, huh. there's there's a few ways you can do this. Okay. Uh, if you use multi tracks, anyways, your music director, MD, worship leader, whatever, you can ask them to bounce out guitar tracks a little yeah. higher in the click mix. So we always bounce out for our, our teams the, the click track with the tracks. Like we take mm -hmm. out the there's no vocal in it. I typically think it sounds better without the drums. Everybody can kind of feel what's happening when they're, you know. Yeah. But then you can bounce the guitars up a little hotter and you can identify them as this is EG1, EG2. Gotcha. And then that takes all the guesswork out. Or you can go to multitracks.com and listen to Rehearsal Mix. Exactly. Where they will give you uh, all the individual parts and you can yeah. solo them out, basically. Now, the, well, the, well, the one downside is you can't, like, solo it out. Yeah, you can't solo solo You can it hear it a little bit louder. It's some some, some different uh, churches or artists or whatever, they'll, they'll do guitar they'll do like EG1 will actually be two guitars. Yeah. And it'll be panned. Well, it's going to okay. be a little odd. So I went to Rehearsal Mix to listen to David Crowder's How He Loves. Yes. And there were no less than eight electric Yeah, there's guitars. a lot of guitar parts. And they're sometimes. all weird parts. Sometimes they're not so, different tracks. Sometimes it's just like one part that happens four times in the song. They'll do it yeah, all at yeah. once. Yeah. But sometimes it sounds like they just took like so, a left and a right mix and made it one. It's like, that's not yeah, one. Yeah, so which goes back to communication. So if you're gonna have two guitar it all players. all comes back to communication. If you're gonna have two guitar players playing uh, electric guitar parts in a song, you've gotta distill down all the parts of the song to two parts. Mm -hmm. And and one way that, uh, one way that is very common, that it's, you know, you'll, you'll hear people say lead or, and rhythm. Right, so that's really easy. Really easy. One person's playing lead guitar, the other person plays rhythm if guitar. If the other guy's playing chords, you shouldn't play chords. Yeah, but here's the thing though that we're doing a lot today is often we're, because a lot of these worship songs, there's not lead guitar through the whole song. Yeah, you're not just shredding it's just, through everything. It's just like in the turnarounds or the intros and outros, there's like one melodic part, but the rest of the time we're like both playing rhythm. Yeah, or like there's some like arpeggiating of a chord basically. Yeah, so there are ways that you can both play Play rhythm uh, and play them differently and one way that I like to think about it is and that we're doing today is what part of the neck are you on when you're playing yep. so like we basically took it like on the songs that Brad's playing lead on you're staying like above yeah, the I'm fifth staying, fret. I'm staying up yeah if I'm, I'm playing staying like below. rhythm yeah yeah and then and then yeah and vice versa so even if like we're both playing rhythm parts. You're playing chord voicings that are different than what I'm playing. Yes. And it makes this huge wall of sound. Very important. That is what you typically hear in these songs. Yes. Because by the time you add overdrive and like delay and reverb to rhythm and stuff, or guitars in general, mm -hmm. the, the distinction can be pretty small. Like it can be yeah. kind of hard. Now, if you got like, 
you know, a guy using like a Tele or Strat through a Vox, and mm -hmm. then somebody using a Fender with like a PRS with humbuckers. That'll speaking, be different. Speaking of, what are you playing today? I'm playing uh, my Sir Tele, mm -hmm. my Sir Classic T, as mm -hmm. it were, uh, and I'm using a Tone Junkie profile of a Two Rock Bloomfield. What is a Bloomfield based yeah, it's on? It's some super is clean Fender, Fender thing. thing. And I'm I'm playing my Shelton Skyflight, which is a Strat. And I'm playing Axe FX3, uh, Morgan AC20, pretty much all day. So we are playing different guitars, although both single coils, through different types of amps. Yeah, but a lot of times people will think like, Brad's playing telly, so he's got single coils. I need to have humbuckers. I don't think that that's that big of a deal. You can just roll off more low end, or at, you know, yeah. you can you can change it up. You can do that if you want to. Yeah, sure, that's a good. Yeah. Uh, I, Fuller sort of subscribes to that. He does. Uh, two services done. Great success. Great success. All right, this is this is the end of the vlog because I'm terrible at ending these. So, okay, bye. We've come. No, no, no. We need final thoughts on oh. two guitars. You might say to yourself. Two guitars is pretty normal. It's pretty boring. This is not a topic we're talking about. But arrangement, how you arrange your songs, and what your musicians play on stage is so important. And getting people to lock together and play things that complement one another will make your sound just infinitely better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And like, any final thoughts on two guitars? Sorry, I cut you off. Well, I know a lot of people, some people would probably say, oh, two guitars is a pipe dream. I understand. Actually, at my campus, I'm pretty regularly the only guitar player. So Sometimes but, here at Durham, I'm Sometimes you are, yeah. Yeah, sometimes that's fun. But when you play with two people, and like, when you hear like two guitar parts, and you're like, you can play a part and make the, everything sound so much bigger. So just enjoy it. It's good. Yeah, it's but, good. But definitely be intentional yeah, about be intentional. what you play and how it sounds. Yeah, and I, I typically say I don't learn a song just the one part I'm supposed to play. Yeah. I, I at least right. am familiar with the other parts. Yeah. So if we need to make a change, you can jump around. I can jump around. Or we're like, you know what? Like, don't come so locked into just playing the part you think is assigned to you. Yeah. Because maybe in the room it doesn't feel good. Yeah, and it's nice. It feels good to be able to say to whoever your worst leader and music director is. Like, oh yeah, I can play any part you need. What do you want? I can do it. Yes. All right, thanks for watching the Sunday vlog with Brian and Bradford. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.